Okay. Okay, we are recording. We are live again. Thanks for everybody's yeah. patience. We got 30, 42 viewers. Okay, everybody's almost everybody's stuck around. <laughs> you guys are nuts. Yeah. <laughs> you know that? I was ready to leave. I was going to go jump in the pool here while we were waiting. <laughs> anyway, Ooh. we're here with Roger Lee, a party, and you guys are just fabulous for sticking with us. And uh, Roger, you were about to tell us. Of course, I have no idea when this thing cut out, but uh, you, we were about to uh, talk about what you've been working on lately. Yeah. Yeah. I, go. You're on. Uh, go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> you totally got me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead, man. I figured I'd just add to it a little bit. There you go. Um, so, you know, you were asking about the, some of the current campaigns, the Jose Cuervo campaign, there's three or four commercials that they, that I did for them that air currently, um, rain X, there are two campaigns running right now. One of them is me and one of them is not right. <laughs> the one that's, uh, the great day is me. Ah, yes. Um, hey, should I show the Cuervo spot? I got it queued up. Uh, yeah. You yeah. mind? I mean, I just got a guy no. sitting here. Here, let's throw it up. Hang on a second. Let's cue the Cuervo. Cue the Cuervo. Fly it in right. over uh, here. I could use one of those right about now. And let's see if it see if it works. Now that I've said everybody I have it. Yeah, it's it's uh, I gotta change the audio device. Crap. There we go. And buffering and 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 <laughs> oh God! <laughs> Starting it over, and here we go. Cue the girl at the end of the cue the chairs. Not that girl. Cue the overtime thrill. Cue the drink. Cue brings it all together. Cue the lights. The other lights. Cue the bar. Cue the girl at the end of the bar. Not that. Cue the queer back. Cue the drink that brings it all together. Cue the new pad. And it's playing in two places at once. Party. You guys slow. happen to notice that? <laughs> I don't know why, but I think they got the point. <laughs> Back was, to you. No the, more. That was the stereo stereo version. Yeah, no more wow. improvising on my part. Please continue. <laughs> Interesting. Now, now, when now, did you you cut that in in your studio? Yes. You know, yeah. Over or, ISDN or? Yeah, over ISDN, they uh, recorded that in. Um, in pop sound in Santa Monica. Oh. And um, that was uh, from my home studio here via ISDN um, through my, uh, my state of the art uh, vocal booth. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll get into that in a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so pop sound me, right in my backyard. Amazing studio. Yeah. Well, let me, let me ask you about this. Cause I know a lot of people are curious. We have a lot of people that are very proficient and, and have had a lot of success and, and do a lot of national spots. A lot of people who are really just learning the business. How did you get that? How do you get something major like that? Or in specifically with that particular campaign? Um, well, I I've been doing it now professionally where I can call voiceover a career for the last few years. So my, before that, I was in the entertainment industry, in the music business a long time ago. So I've got, you know, a behind the mic kind of experience and, you know, a feel for sound and stuff like that. And then I went into production and started producing spots. Um, that particular campaign, I land, landed through my Los Angeles agent. I'm with Abrams Artist Agency in Los Angeles. And um, I was picked up from them as a non-union artist and then became uh, a union artist. Um, I mean, that's kind of just working at it yeah. and, you know, landing, landing stuff and doing, you know, just cars, local car spots and just doing stuff and, and putting in my, my time and, you know, bench work and so experience that, behind a mic. So that yeah. answers the question for people saying, do you have to be in LA to get LA agents and do LA work? And, no, you can work your butt off in any city in the world. And if you have the the talent and the drive and the studio and the experience and all those, the business acumen, 
you know, it can be done. You know, that's your yep. proof positive. Absolutely. But, you know, you got to be aggressive and you got to be um, persistent and you've got to be consistent. Um, consistent. You know, it, it, key. Doesn't, it doesn't just happen. Um, and you can't just have, it's not about just having, you know, oh, I got a good voice, you know. I have an, you know, an, just an average voice. There's nothing special about my voice, but I, I guess it's uh, it's interpretation of copy. It's understanding what a client is looking for for their product and what their demographic is that they're trying to to target and being in tune with it and yep. feeling it out. Yeah, well, you've got sort of that everyday kind of guy voice that everybody's looking for. You know how every script comes across saying, not an announcer. <laughs> right. And, and for those of us that came out of radio, that's like, that's a really tough nut to crack, too. Because, uh, you know, you, this, you get in front of this thing, and suddenly your voice has to drop half an octave, and suddenly you're an announcer and stuff like that. And, and really, you got to learn how to... Just be yourself, and and you know, and talk the way you're. You, we're all the three of us are talking now, mm-hmm. and and that really is the key to it, especially with you know with a spot like that. So, um, you have a rather interesting, oh, we'll call it acoustical situation. We wanted to take a look at your studio because this is a show about home studios, and your home studio, like my home studio, is a. Home studio. <laughs> it's a home. George, you got the, you got the pictures queued up there. I do. I got pictures, no problem. I, I can play the pictures without having audio issues. So we'll bring that up right now. <laughs> Else that makes it a lot easier. <laughs> so I've got uh, the first shot on the screen is of your uh, desk with your your lovely Mackie HR 824 monitors, which are the ones mm-hmm. I used to own, and your iMac. And that's sitting yep. on top of a Mbox Two or Mbox Avid Mbox Pro. Is that what that is? Yeah, that's that new Avid Mbox Pro. And how's that working out for you? It's uh, it's pretty good. Yeah. The the yeah the the interface is much better than the old ones. Mm-hmm. You know, definitely, it's a lot cleaner. Yeah. Um, I do have some issues with it, but mm-hmm. there are issues that you know, like anything else, you're gonna have issues with everything. You got to just learn how to get through them. Sure. Right? And Especially with the, a Mac where it's a little easier to get through some of those issues than, yeah. say, in a PC where you don't have to reconfigure your entire life. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, then you have the exactly. True Precision Solo. I have a True Systems P Solo, yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is that your primary or only preamp? That's that's my only pre. Cool. That's it. That's all it and takes. And as far as the mic goes, it's a Sennheiser MKH416. I used to have a U87 uh, my, my old setup was a U87 and an Avalon 737 SP. And, you know, between those two pieces, you're sitting on, you know, a ton of money that can go to, to much better places that, that work for me personally. I was, I was able to get two systems, identical systems, two 416s and two P solos. So I have my portable rig and I have my, my, my rig that just sits here for what those two pieces were, you know. Or worth sure yeah. now i'm yeah. showing another reverse shot of the room just showing the just sort of the comfortable lounge looking room which looks really cool a lot of photos and then we have the business end of the studio which is the booth and so now i've got a shot showing your copy stand with the 416 over top of it yeah. and uh, your clothing hanging over top yeah <laughs> tell us the story of this particular wonderful high-tech booth i love it <laughs> well um I had been wanting to get a um, a vocal booth for a while, and uh, and one day I just I w- was standing in my closet and my wife was saying something to me. I don't remember what she was saying, and I was yelling downstairs. And as I was yelling, whatever it was that I was yelling, I I I stopped kind of dead in my tracks there and was like, "This is really clean." <laughs> and flat you know there's just nothing to it and yeah. no echo no nothing and i was like nice and this dead. is my vocal booth <laughs> exactly i mean if you have a wisp and this is a great walk-in closet but i mean if you even have one half the size as long as it's well lined with clothing um you know they do a remarkably good job acoustically at uh of, of dealing with resonances and reflection and all sorts of stuff so um yeah. with hardly any modification you know, and and the more down vests you you don't use anymore, the better. Yeah. <laughs> they really do dull the sound in there a lot. Yeah, no, it looks great. I I mean, I, I 
I have clients that are still working out of a closet in various states. You know, some of them have been totally converted into a studio. Some nice are shoes. like yours and are all over. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it it's a as long as it sounds like a studio, that's the bottom line. It only has to sound uh, like a studio. Um, uh, Judy actually asked, "Who did who did have you coached with anyone, or who who did you study with?" I haven't studied with anybody. I um, I actually just. Um, I guess being a producer for so long and being around it and, and being around and working around, <laughs> you know, professionals in this business that, that I've kind of, you know, had the, the luxury and pleasure of working with, you know, people like Bill Vogel and he's a voice for mad TV for a long time and a lot of big campaigns he does. And he's been in the business for 30 plus years and just listening to these guys that I was working with on a daily basis, you know, recording them and editing them and, you know, doing all that stuff gave me a, um, a, a good idea as to, not for what to do as far as my voice goes, because there's a completely different sound than me. It's, you know, big sound, you know, the voice, you know, like that kind of thing, which I don't have, obviously. But uh, but just. It was a framework the approach. Yeah, approach, it was sort of a know? model to work from. Right. Exactly. And And things that like me as a producer, you know getting the read, you know, these guys, they give you, they give you the read. It's not, you know, 20 takes and it's, you know, usually one, two and takes and you get it and you, you got to get through these things. And it's, you know, I, I saw a thing on your, the breaths and, and yes, not a zillion breaths and, uh, you know, and just, just reading it and de- delivering it the way it should be delivered. And yeah, you're, I, I mean, you're I, learning from I, example, learning from example. That was it. Mm-hmm. Right, and when you work with a lot of other great people, and you, you learn a lot from them too, as much as you're telling, as much as you're directing them, you see the technique they have, so you have a lot to uh, a lot to work with, right? Mm-hmm. A lot to exactly. emulate. Yeah, exactly. Do you do a lot of processing in the box with Pro Tools? Uh, when I'm producing, or when I'm just voicing? when you're just voicing, do you, does anybody expect you to send uh, you know tracks wet, or you do just everything you know normalize and that's it? I just, I, you know, this piece solo does a really, really good job of just the a c- good, clean, uncolored sound. You know, it's exactly what the, all it's delivering is the sound of the microphone and the sound of my voice. And, and that's it. I go into Pro Tools. I do, um, I do cut the bass. Yeah. You know, just to, uh, that, you know, I'm not real Roll technical off. as far as that goes, but I, I just drop the bass, you know, to that 60 or whatever it is, you know, yeah. just to lose any possible room noise. Yeah. Rumble. Um, and that's it. Just mm-hmm. to, you know, what's that over your, uh, your, it should be your left shoulder. I think what's that, uh, looks like a mixer, but I'm not really sure. I can't right really, there? yeah. What is that? That, that is an emu SP 1200. That is what I produced my first album on. Oh, and wow. It's a sampler sequencer type unit. Yeah. Sampler sequencer. It's 20 plus years old. It's, you awesome. know, 10, 10 seconds of sample time. That's all it had on it. And we'd have to make complete <laughs> albums off of that. That's awesome. <laughs> wow. Very cool. So yeah, I can keep then, it there uh, just to remind right you where you came that from. That is, uh, is my, my son. Hey there. My older son. <laughs> it looks quite happy over there. <laughs> yeah, well, he's 15. How happy can you be? That's true. I got a 16-year-old. I can totally relate. <laughs> so he's the one that's getting in the voiceover or has been getting into it for a long time? Yeah, he's been uh, he's been behind a mic, not not voicing commercials, but but he's been comfortable behind a mic since he's like three or four years old, and um, and probably he's been doing commercials now since he's nine, earning money, not a living, but he's been making money and and he loves doing it. And just recently, he actually he booked his first national job and he did a um, a national Target commercial. Nice. Congratulations. All right. Nothing like a kid that earns his keep. Oh, that's, that's beautiful. That's a so. beautiful thing. <laughs> so, yeah, it was just being in the environment for him. I mean, you bring him into the studio, getting him used to the microphone, the environment, hearing himself, that kind of stuff. I mean, is that is that how do you think he got started uh, being comfortable, just being in the environment? I think being in the environment, um, he's always had um, a natural feel for it, though. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's, it's, it's interesting. And I say it and, and he knows, you know, I don't, I don't, uh, we're terrible readers. It's incredible. Yeah. 
I'm a terrible reader, and and he's a terrible reader. He gets his bad vision, and he gets his terrible reading from his dad. But for some reason, when you put copy in front of us, it we 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 can read. Yeah, I mean, think think about this for a second. Here's a here's a kid who's been doing this since he was you know you, since he started walking. What if we had had the opportunity to start doing this? But when we had just started walking, where would we be today? Oh boy! And look how far ahead he's going to be just because uh, he was under your tutelage there. Oh yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. I got his back. He's uh, <laughs> absolutely. He's, you know, he's, he's going to be a good one. He's going to be one to watch for. I assure you. Right, and you've been, and of course, you're writing his levels too, which makes it even easier. And you're going to take care. Uh, of him. He's going to be <laughs> watching your back and take care of you in about thirty or forty years. So. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. As you know what they say, you know, be kind to your kids. They pick your nursing home. Right. <laughs> so anyway, so I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see you're a production guy too. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people get into voiceover and they're like, I'm a voice actor, you know, and, and my background, I was a production director in radio for many years. And there's, there's just something to being able to assemble both sides of a spot uh, that really is, it's, it's such a skill in its own. And uh, I'm always people are always asking me about it, and I think it's great that you know you've been able to take those production skills and be able to do voiceover at the same time, and because it gives you such a better feel for what it is you're actually doing when you're sitting behind the mic. Yes, I I agree. There are are few times that that does not work in our favor, but most of the time. It is, it is a good thing. There are some times, because, it's, it, because the one thing that it's very difficult to do as a producer is take the producer out of yourself as a voice artist. Right, absolutely. So when, when, some, when you're doing a, a session and somebody's giving you direction and you're like, man, that's just, you're, in your head you're thinking, that's just not how I would do it. I wouldn't do it that way. Yeah. It's, sometimes it's difficult to take that out, but a lot of the time it works out that, that it was better because it's something that you wouldn't have done and you learned something from it and, and, and it just, it, it all in. There's, you don't know everything, something new every single day. I know Pro Tools like the back of my hand and I learn something new every day. Because <laughs> it's plain the alarm. manual is this thick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what What do you think's been the most challenging thing uh, that you've you've done in a voice acting job? Just something where you're like, "Wow, how am I going to get through this?" Um, I actually had you guys can hear me. Yeah. Yep. Long form narration is just something. Being somebody who's not a very good reader. Yeah. Uh intimidates me quite a bit and one of the very first things that i landed um you know aside from just regular work one of the first things that i landed like auditioning for ended up being this long form narration and it was about 34 pages and the the i knew what to do i i got it i couldn't get through the first three lines of this of of this paragraph Wow. And internally, what seemed like an hour and a half, it was only about 10 seconds, but I just froze and, and my whole body went cold. And in my mind, I was thinking, I'm not going to be able to do this. I don't, I don't, I can't get through these first three lines. How am I going to do 34 pages? And, uh, and I went into a little bit of a panic and I, but then I recomposed and zipped right through it and, and, uh, and, it worked itself out, yeah. But yeah. Uh, but long form narration is something you know. When you get into these technical things, I do a lot of work for IBM and uh, and technical stuff and big words, and they want you to do it in that regular guy conversational, like you're having coffee with your friend, right? And they want you to talk about you know microelectronics and stuff like that. The and, but make it sound fun, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Long so, form long format stuff is. Uh, you know, I I think it's there's probably more long format stuff out there than there is actually commercial stuff, and and you're absolutely right. You know, with all the weird corporate stuff that we do, and you know, installing you know bifurcated arterial stent grafts, and uh, I mean it's 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 fascinating. And I think I was reading in one of the forums today, someone was talking about what a great job this is because we really have our thumb 
on everything that's going on, and it helps if you actually have a lot of cultural literacy to understand the products that we're pushing or the, the, the concept that we're trying to get across to employees. So uh, that yeah. kind of stuff is very, very important. I, I have yeah. one last question for, yeah. for Roger from the room because we've got some great. great ones. And a lot of people are saying, yes, this one's great. Um, uh, Susan asks, what are, what are your best marketing tips if there's any arena in the voiceover or in voiceover that he's not currently in and wants to explore? I guess that's two questions. But really, what is what are your... What have you done that you think that's been the most fruitful for you in regards to marketing? Well, here's what I do. I don't really do marketing. Mm -hmm. What I do is I work on me as a brand. And, you know, there's no such thing as downtime. If I'm not doing auditions or I'm not doing work, what I am doing is trying to figure out how to get more work or how to get myself in more places. So it's trying to get my hands either on work that I've done. Um, it's trying to work on new demo product, you know, that, that sells other parts of what I'm capable of doing. It, and it's fine tuning my craft constantly, always. And, and shopping yourself around. You can never, you know, you, you can never have, too many agents. You got to. You can't have them in the same place. Like you can't have two LA agents. You know, but but cover cover the cover places. You know, if you're somebody just getting started, hit your local. You know, try to do car spots. Try to do the the furniture stuff. Try to do all this stuff. Just start earning money and start earning. Um, uh, um, just trying to get yourself out there. You know, getting yourself experience and learning how to deal with clients at every level. You know, and. So I don't, that's, to me, that's not marketing. To me, it's just it's shopping you as a product and, and getting to the places that are going to be able to market you. You don't market you. They market you. Right. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's so building that, the network. The question? Yeah. 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 I, it answers it perfectly, actually. I mean, that's, I mean I, there's probably more people doing it that way than are you know, sitting there waiting for their agent to call because that's no way to make a living. No. You know, you've got to get out there and do it, do it yourself. And you're obviously succeeding at it. So congratulations to you. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's Way great. Go. Yeah. Let, well, let me just tell, let me just tell you one, one quick story. Sure. And, uh, doesn't have to be that quick either. I've, I've told friends this and it's something that I think is very important in, in anything that you do. When I first got, uh, to the, to the point where it was possible I could do something national. Okay. I got on to Nickelodeon's roster, all right? And they used to keep just a roster, an in-house roster, Viacom through that, that section. It was just their people that happened to be on this email list. They didn't go to agencies to, to get their stuff. They went internally. So uh, fortunately, I got onto this list through somebody that I knew. I thought I was Nickelodeon all day. I got, I, I, you know, coming up next on Nick, you know, like I, have, I had that, that thing. I did that young thing. I auditioned, I, they sent me auditions all the time. For an entire year, I auditioned and didn't land one thing. So many things I got, I was like, I, I know I'm going to get this. I'm definitely going to get this. <laughs> you got cocky a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it didn't work that way. <laughs> never. A whole entire year went by. The next year started. Every year I set new goals. So this, uh, the, the, the year went by. And... Um, I get an audition at the beginning of the year. I go ahead and I print it out, and I, this is before my iPad, and I put it up on my, uh, on my stand. And then I looked at it, and then I said, I'm not doing this. I walked out of my vocal booth. I went back to work. A couple hours into it, I said, you know what? I said, screw it. I'm going to go do it. I go in there. The very first time, in a whole entire year, the first time I went in there and, and didn't care about what I did, I didn't try to do it the way I thought it should sound. I just threw it away. Yeah. It was the very first job <laughs> I landed with them. <laughs> and from that point on, my, my audition to land ratio with them is probably four out of 10. And now they even just call me. They don't even have me audition for things. The producers just will say, call Roger, call Roger. Oh, that's where you want to be in this career. That, 
That's a beautiful thing. So that's, that's awesome for the story. people to not to not you know not give up and that you that you have to audition. I work oh, yeah. every single day and I still have to audition every single day. That's right. Well, that's it. That is one fabulous tidbit. I, there are people out there applauding hearing that one. That's that's a great piece. <laughs> no, a lot of people are saying this is great television. I wish we could say we were actually on TV, but this is the closest we're going to get in a while. <laughs> but uh, well, that, that's a great story, though. And, that, and that's for sharing that. so true. So true. Just once you be, you're trying to be yourself, you're not trying to be somebody else. And once you are yourself and you relax, that's when you're able to let go and, and, and take chances like that. So that's really yeah. cool. Roger, it's been fabulous well, it's fabulous being down here in Florida, but it's fabulous being down here in Florida with you. And thanks for being on our show tonight. Well, thank you. I appreciate it, guys. Thanks a ton. That's great. Roger Leopoldi. All righty. What a great show. Even though, even with the technical glitches. Especially because of the technical glitches. Especially because I, that's what, <laughs> people watch us like 500. You know, it's like they want to see us crash, but they want to get, see us get out of the car and wave. Exactly. You know, it's... As long as we wave, it's okay. <laughs> All right. All righty. Well, we'll be back in just a minute or so here. Uh, we've got, uh, we still have your studio pictures coming in. Yes, we do. You know, and, and you'll notice that, you know, we're now running kind of late. People are saying, oh, you're on till 1030. Well, it's now what we call the null zone. So make up for all the technical glitches we have. Exactly. So we actually were scheduled to be on till 1030 or so, but we'll, right. we'll, we'll probably be off in just a little while. It gives ourselves a cushion. That's right. Just a little bit of a pad. <laughs> All righty. Well, we'll be right back. So you stick around. And we're back here on East West Audio Body Shop. Thanks again to Roger Leopold. That was, that was, that was, that was a great. That was great. Great, great tidbit of information there. Just yeah. be yourself. Thanks again to Roger Leopold for that one. That was just fabulous. He's a great example it's, of not having to play the game so much. I mean, he's playing the game, but he's not having to. I don't know. He's he he's doing his own thing. He's doing it on his terms in his home in Florida and. uh just showing that it doesn't require relocating, you know, it doesn't require um, going to that extent sometimes. It requires tremendous dedication. That's true. You know, and a that, nice closet. And a nice closet. That's not hurt. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And speaking of really fabulous, it's time to talk again about our great friend Harlan Hogan and voiceoveressentials.com because he's got all the stuff you need. Uh, it's all the the... Not a lot of big selection of stuff, but because he's already done a great job of picking out the best stuff for you. And, of course, his own products like the uh, the Harlan Hogan Porta Pro, 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 Pro Booth <laughs> Pro, which is actually in there now, the new and improved Porta Booth Pro. And uh, it's a great little unit. Why don't you get that up on the screen yeah, there? Doing that right now. The, the Porta Booth Pro. And, uh, I'm a little behind today. I'm like 30 seconds behind, so I can't see what's going on. This is really flying by the seat of your pants. And totally. <laughs> totally. <laughs> so, yeah, the new Portable Pro features new, now even better. It's got a larger LED with a proper yep. AAA batteries. Yep. That's nice. And, you know, and it's, uh, it, it, you know, come, there's, he has the stand for it. And the, mm -hmm. uh, it's actually a great unit when you learn how to use it mm -hmm. it's uh you know it's like anything else you have to learn you know the the little temperamental things about it but once you once you find the sweet spot in that thing which is not hard and we can show you how to do that it's a great thing to have uh especially if we're on the road and there's still room in there for your underwear which is kind of cool yeah there's like an anti-sway strap that makes the stand makes it uh, more stable 
Um, he's figured out a way to hang it from a mic boom stand without having to have any other accessories so that it just sort of hangs off the stand and puts the mic in the right spot. So he, Harlan is never, he never rests. He never he does rests. Not sleep. I mean, he, I he, he, when these came out, he <laughs> sold, he sold them out very quickly and he could just keep selling them as is. And he's continuously coming up with new ways to improve it. So yeah, I love that. I love that about Harlan, and and it's 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 just a great product. It's made really well, and uh, he puts a lot of, put a, puts a lot of care into into what he does. So yeah, so voiceoveressentials.com for all your voiceover needs. Thanks, Harlan. Thank you, Harlan. Really appreciate right. your support. Yep. Okay. Well, we're sort of in the home stretch here. Yes, sir. Yeah. I wanted to share and- some photos. Yeah, let's take a look at some studio photos. This is one of the best parts of our show because we want to see what you guys look like. Now, we saw into Roger Leopardi's studio tonight in in his closet and his wonderful office there. Yeah. Who do we have tonight? Uh, Well, we got one that just popped in. And because when my machine went down, I had all the stuff organized. I had it everywhere where I could find it. And now I'm having to like scramble and get everything back up again. So I've grabbed a one that just came in because it was very easy to find. And uh, it's from Adam Sherman and he's in Salt Lake City, Utah. (laughs) And he built up a closet in one of the rooms. He he said, I used green glue and disconnected as much as I could. I have double framed walls on the interior that are about 10 inches thick. I did not disconnect the floor or float the floor as much as I, I, I did not disconnect the floor as much as I could have. But I didn't have the heart or the money to rip up the subfloor and begin triple flanging. <laughs> it's not, not really necessary. Yeah, I put in the two solid wood doors. I used audio mute wall coverings to absorb the high and mid and red bass traps in the back for the lows. I have a mixer there on the desk, but the inbox still works well, and I don't want to get too complicated before I learn a bit more. That's why I watch you guys. And he said, why the window? I plan on renting the booth someday to folks who need a better place to go and can't afford a studio. So we'll see how that goes. So, okay, here are the shots. Yeah. So so it's a work in progress thing here where he's got actually images of him putting the place together. He's caulking some uh, foam uh, pads that he put on the floor. There's another angle of the actual control room space where his computer is set up. And he's got a the, he's got a shot of Dan and I Dan and I on the show. That's <laughs> that never hurts, uh, you know. No. Curry favor, and then we, cer- got, we certainly like the loyal fans. <laughs> and that looks like a Mackie monitor there. Yeah, I think that's the newer six two six monitor. And uh, let's see, he's got a little portable printer and a classic Mbox Mini or the Mbox Mini two. There's the double oh, solid core doors. Those look pretty. If you're selecting doors for your studio, I recommend not getting doors that have paneling because that actually takes away from the mass of the door. Uh, so look for a flat face door. Um, just a little tip because I saw that. But I'm sure with a double door configuration, it's probably giving him quite a bit of uh, isolation. And then, um, okay, so here's inside the booth. He's got the monitor. Once again, a picture of Dan and I on there. I'm sure he's got that monitor mirroring what's coming on the other screen. And there's his mic and headphones, and his, you know everything's arranged in there. And uh, oh, they, there's a tight okay. shot of the booth and tight shot of the laptop and the microphone, and just some other beauty shots of some of the some of the bits and pieces he has around his space. And there's a wow. shot of the uh, what is that? No, it's just I guess that's a reverse or just no, that's like a fisheye lens shot showing the booth. It makes it look huge. Yeah. <laughs> that's and awesome. It probably really isn't. Yeah, that's cool. Well, that's really that's cool. That's a really nice looking booth. <laughs> this is this is what it's about, guys. Being innovative and resourceful and using what you have and taking the knowledge that you can get along the way to uh to make a, a really nice home studio for yourself. And uh, you know, and I know the sound coming out of there is really, really good. And it's not well. He put a lot of effort into that. He did, yeah. Not obviously, he needed to isolate that a whole lot. So uh, apparently, he's achieved that. And and apparently, it's still a work in progress. And uh, we appreciate him sending the stuff in. Oh yeah, we appreciate any pictures that come in. I've I've got more. I haven't even gotten to show yet, but I promise I'm going to keep showing them and get a little more organized and show you more. Actually, I wanted to show you. There's one more from. Uh, voice on the run. Why don't I have a name for voice on the run? If you're listening, tell us your name. Let's see. Voice on the run. <laughs> These all say 
they're just photos from an iPhone, obviously. But uh, <laughs> he has a color shifting booth. So let me share this with you guys. This is pretty cool. Hang on a second. Click the view button, which should bring up a window, which should let me share it. And it's sideways. Oh, well, that's great. interesting. It's not maybe, sideways. You know, maybe in the he email. just does it lying down. No, yeah, right. But there's the uh, red lighting, but he can also do the lighting in blue. He can do the lighting in yellow. So he has like a color shifting LED lighting in there. Wow. That's pretty cool. I would do that. I would, that's something I would do. <laughs> I would do color shifting lighting in my booth if I could. <laughs> that well, is excellent. You can, you can suggest that to some of your clients. Oh, totally. I know where to get the lights too. I know exactly what to get. There's these really cool lights that come on like a roll of, almost looks like just a roll of ribbon or tape. And they have just, they're just <laughs> yeah, really. LED yeah, lights. Or, or LED lights. Yeah. Well, and that is kind of cool. You can get color controllers. Well, okay. And, it's they're pretty well, awesome. Well, I think it's time to uh, wrap it up for uh, another week here. Mm -hmm. I know you're all going, oh, but I'm actually getting dirty looks from the audience here. So we got to got to sort of wrap it up. <laughs> you hit um, curfew on your what end. What for next week? <laughs> not quite sure yet, are we? I'm no, people are not clamoring to, to be up against the Oscars. So uh, we'll, we'll oh, see what right. happens. That's we'll right. See what happens next with week. the Oscars. Well, we could be on earlier. No, yeah, we might do that. We'll keep you guys posted. We'll keep it flexible. We will, you know, so stay tuned to your email. Maybe, maybe we'll be on, we'll have, we'll have a red carpet uh, walking of our own. There you How go. That sound? <laughs> maybe I should just bomb. Maybe I should just uh, crash the uh, Oscars and walk around with my I iPhone or something. There you go. Yeah. Broadcast <laughs> live from there. <laughs> well, with that. And with that, well, it's been an interesting evening and, uh, we will be back sooner or later, if, whether it's n the next week or the week after. <laughs> but we appreciate you guys coming in and joining <clears throat> us and all the, uh, the emails we get and the calls and the pictures of your studios. And uh, we love it, and we're having a great time doing it, and we're hoping you're having as great a time watching it as we're having doing it. So anyway, uh, we'll see you next week. I'm Dan Leonard in the East. I'm George Whittem in the West. We're East-West Audio Body Shop. You have a great week. Take Talk care, to you everybody. Soon.